All right. So yeah, this is just the swing training strategy inside of the course. We're actually teaching two different strategies. One of them is swing training, which has been the strategy that me and Nick used for a long time. And then we recently added a uh, intraday strategy into the course. And that one we're using the VWAP and volume session tools. As you see, I've got this up here. Um, so it's a little bit different. It's meant to be traded during the New York session. And those trades, you're not supposed to really be holding beyond the New York session. So it's very much just an intraday, like during the session type of strategy. So that's being taught inside of the course as well. But for the sake of this call, since we're not actually online during the New York session, we're literally just going through swing trades. So when I hop on and look for trades on mine, I always just start on the weekly time frame. As you can see, I've got these two levels marked. So I'm always looking for kind of two areas, two levels where price has previously been to and has reacted multiple times. So I'm just going to go ahead. So I've got this on here. I'm just going to delete these. And we'll just talk about it. This. So we've got this upper level and this is based on, we've got support in this area, support. And then looking further in, we've got all support along this area, support, support, resistance, resistance. So whenever price has hit this area, this 1.38, 1.383 area, we have seen a lot of rejection. Um, so that's why I've just marked this. If price does make it back into this area, I am going to expect reversal. Same thing for this area down here. We've got resistance all in this area of resistance. We've got some support there, nothing too major, but we've got major resistance, major resistance. Then it acted as major support. And then more previously, it acted as major support right here. Now look at the trends on the weekly time frame. Go ahead and get this. Look at the trend overall in the weekly time frame. This is a downtrend. We've been making these lower lows and lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, right? And this was the most previous lower low. Now we're retracing and we're searching for the next potential lower high area. Obviously, this is the previous low point. This is also a previous low point. So these are potential areas of reversal. And then we have our more major level, which is all the way up here. So look how price has been formed in the last couple of weeks. I'm just going to go ahead and take this off. We have three bullish candles in a row, which certainly do signify a lot of bullish pressure coming to the market, about 2.5% move up. Uh, but at the same time, look at last week's candle. Last week's candle, although bullish, definitely lost some steam here at the end. We had some sellers step in. So sellers tried to push this down. Buyers pushed it up. Now we're just kind of at this resistance level, right? We're at this area that previously price rejected off of in the opposite direction. So not to say that I'm looking for sells yet, but my eye is definitely on this area. If we go ahead and just fib this overall structure right here, this is the 61.8 area. Um, so right here, we're either going to see reversal or price is just going to hop up and probably come all the way back up to this key level, all the way 200 pips um, to the upside. So let's go down to a lower time frame and see. As you can see on the lower time frame, this thing is just bullish all the way. So uh, price action has just been printing higher highs and higher lows over and over and over again. And as you can see, we're always retesting this previous high and then shooting to a new high because we're trending. Um, so that's what we're expecting here. We're not trying to take an entry at the moment because we just miss the entry. The entries, and for you beginners out there, let's just go ahead and clear some of this. The entries are always going to want to be in these positions. These are the higher low points. We never want to enter at a high, especially while we're in an uptrend, right? So we're always trying to enter at these higher low positions. Right now, we are at a high point. So we have all this room where price can retrace, and we're still respectably in the trend, right? If price comes all the way down here, we're still respectively in an uptrend. Um, so we don't want to enter up here. It gives us way too much room to fuck up on this. So we're just going to wait. If price action does something... Similar to this, it comes back and retests this previous level. Then we can look for an entry right there. Or more ideally, price moves, breaks this high, and then we see something like this, where price does one of these, retests, like it's done over and over, and over again all these times right here. Um, so we're either looking for a break, retest, entry on the retest of the high, go long or wait for it to retrace, get back into this higher low position, um, and then look for an entry in that area. Now, 
say price does start to respect this weekly area, there's a lot of ways to go about determining when this trend is broken. We could obviously bring on a trend line. Let's just go ahead and clear this up a little bit. If price starts to break trend, so it starts to come down, boom, come up, come down, right? So if price breaks this area, we just took it off, but if, if it breaks this previous level of support, that's when we're going to start to look for reversal and the potential retest um, before shorting this. So two scenarios on GU. We're not really close to entry right now. This is the four-hour time frame. We are looking to swing this. Um, so we have to be pretty patient on GU. We do have a potential opportunity on NU lined up. I'm going to just go, before I look at this, I'm going to go back um, to DXY because I do want to get an idea of what's going on with this thing because I haven't looked at it since last week. So DXY, looking at the weekly time frame, we're just doing the same thing. Weekly, I'm looking at what is my key levels and then what is price action doing the last couple of weeks? So here we have resistance, Atien's resistance. We have it acting as support. We have it acting as support. We have it acting as support, support. And then it came down, pushed up. And now we're retesting this zone right here. And see how this is significant rejection. This right here is significant rejection, significant rejection. Same thing here, same thing there. So it's done this so many times. So we can definitely classify this as an area where price is going to either reject, you know, or it's going to break and retest at a minimum. Now, coming down here, um, look at this on DXY. So the previous few weeks we had come up to this level, we had some uh, reversal candles, we had a doji, we had a spinning top, spinning top, then this thing kind of tricked everyone out, pushed the upside, and that candle got covered by the following week. So that signified that this was just showing some rejection at this level. Two weeks ago, we finally moved down. So we broke support. Last week, we retested, rejected it, um, but we didn't move to the downside. So this is kind of just like an inverted hammer. So this is showing us that sellers rejected this, but weren't able to move it lower in last week's candle. So there's still some buyers left right now. And going down now to the four hour, it becomes pretty clear. So we had drawn this little channel. It's not the cleanest thing in the world, but pretty much we had point A, point B, point C. You know, we had this channel forming here to the upside, same thing. We had like four points, five points that it hit. And we were just waiting for this to break out because this is pretty bearish, what was going on here. This was just trying to push higher, not pushing higher than the previous high, making higher lows, yes, but it was weak. Then we finally broke out. That was that weekly breakout. This was the retest right here. And then this was the seller stepping in and saying, no, 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 you know, we're still in this. Looking at this right now, considering we just had a push, we are looking for some sort of pullback before this thing pushes again. Now, if this thing does pull back, this is gonna be the dollar gaining some strength and then losing strength. So let's go ahead and look at uh, GU here. If the dollar uh, loses or gains some strength and then loses some strength, then GU would push down and then would push up. So if it were to go in line with what we're predicting now using, the, using DXY, this is pretty much what we would be looking at on GU. We'd be looking at a pullback and then we'd be looking at this thing to go higher, right? Now, NU is kind of similar right now. We're looking for the dollar to gain some strength and then lose some strength. NU, if this thing were to gain some strength, this would mean that we'd get this push down right away on this, on this move. So let's go back up to the weekly on NU. Let's just start all the way from the top. Let's take this off so we can actually see what's going on. So we have these, our two key levels, right? We've got support all in this area. We have going all the way back to here. We got resistance. We have support, support, resistance, resistance, support, support. And then this is where we currently are, right? So then we, on the downside, we have similar. We have resistance, resistance, support, resistance, resistance, resistance. And then this thing acted as support right in here. So if you zoom out, it should be pretty clear what your levels represent, right? I'm not sitting here and trying to stress over why this level's here. It's pretty freaking obvious why the level's here. It's rejected it with a ton of volume. I mean, look how one time it fell off. Let's see how much this thing fell off. This thing moved 16%, 15% in 
on one of these fall offs. So this is definitely a key level. Now let's zoom in a little bit. What did price action do this previous week? So we can see this price action. We had a break of support. We retested it last week. It was bearish. It rejected the level. We closed with some exhaustion here. Um, but overall, we are bearish on this. Structure is bearish on NU on the weekly time frame. So with that in mind, let's just go down to the four hour. We have yet to tap this lower level yet, which is why what I'm looking for here on the four hour, it's very obvious. We just had a break of structure. Now we're looking for the retest, which is right at this level. We have support here, pretty clean. And then we're just looking to get back down into this level. We can go ahead, we can fib this. If we're trying to justify our position a little bit more. Let's go ahead and take this off. So we're right at this 38.2 area. We already have some rejection candles. So this is a fairly good risk reward trade. We've got two to one. You could even squeeze the stops a little bit more to make it even better. Um, but I'm going to leave some room in here. So this is a decent trade idea for right now on NU. Just short this thing. You've got stops at 6,800. You've got your targets back at this support level on the higher time frame, right at about 67, right at about this area. Um, and yeah, ton of ton of confirmations. And uh, there's like no reason to really be buying this at the moment. Um, so that's my idea on NU. Let's go over to UCAD. Let's hop up to the weekly time frame. So we're gonna do same exact thing on the weekly time frame. We don't want to overcomplicate things. We've got resistance, we've got support. We don't quite make it down in this area. We don't quite make it down here, but we have resistance here, resistance here. So it has tested this area once, twice, three, four, five times. That's enough for it to be a key level. And then to the downside, we've got support in this area. We've got resistance. Look how this fell off, melted off the level. And then we've got just a bunch of consolidation. We've got resistance, then we acted as support. So this is definitely another key area. So we're kind of trading in this zone, right? We're right in those two levels. And then zooming in on this, look how price is forming. We had formed this, we pushed up. We had this higher low, we pushed up. So we made a new high. Now we're in this next higher low phase and we're looking for it to continue the upside. Let's go ahead and look at candlestick analysis. So we can see last week, look at this doji. Can't even really see that, but basically price pushed up, then pushed down, but it failed to go lower. That's a reversal signal right there. So that's all I'm going to do on the weekly. Let's go now to the four hour. So four hour time frame, we can see like last week we had the same play on this. If you go back and look at last week's call, um, pretty much price opened here, right here. We were just predicting it was going to go up. I was I wanted to wait till it actually came lower though before I took an entry. Um, so we didn't get in on a trade on this, but it did move up quite a bit, moved up 140 pips, showing that there's so many buyers down at this level. Now it did come back down with a lot of seller selling pressure, right? So I'm going to be a little bit more patient on this. I do want it to come down into this zone. This is our key level. And then I want it to start to do a little fucking around. So I wanted to do this, have that break retest and then go to the upside, right? So we just want to be a little bit patient on this. We've got the level there. This would be an extremely aggressive trade. This is the four hour time frame. So really we're not close to an entry. I'm going to move NU up. This is the same situation as GU. We are just waiting ultimately for more confirmation on this pair. And let's think of this in terms of what we looked at with DXY. Um, if DXY loses some strength and then gains some strength, that means that we would be losing some strength. We'd be pushing down. So CAD would be gaining strength against the dollar and then it would be gaining some strength. So it would be moving to the upside. So let's go back to this Y. We predicted it would be gaining some strength and losing some strength. So it'd be the same thing here, it'd be gaining some strength, losing some strength. So that's actually opposite of this whole UCAT idea. But if you have been on these calls before, it's good to have like multiple different ideas because basically if this thing breaks, the only way I would take a sell is if it breaks this floor right here. So this would be like trade idea number two is say that it goes in line with what we've just gone over with DXY. If this thing ends up 
uh, losing more strength. That means it would, CAD would gain strength against the dollar. We'd actually be looking to short this thing more long term. So this is trade scenario number one right here. This is trade scenario number two. I'm just going to go ahead and move this over and look at it like this, guys. If price comes down to this level, starts to fuck around, say you take a buy right there and then all of a sudden it gets invalidated, it moves lower, um, maybe it hits the stops or you cut your, your losses short, then you can just hop in in the other direction, right? Maybe you lose half percent, maybe you lose 1%. You can hop in the other direction and cover that position pretty quickly. Um, so this is why we're always kind of just going over two potential scenarios here, because if you lose a trade, you know, you should always be trying to adapt and trying to take another trade, right? You shouldn't just get all bummed out and get all pissed off. You got to stay, stay in the game and just stick to the plan here. So that's UCAD. A lot of patience on this one. We're not really near where we need to be yet. Last for the Forex pairs, and I'm going to hop into crypto um, a little bit because BTC Definitely looking interesting. And I was actually doing some research this weekend on some things, but we're going to look at BTC um, in a second here. Yeah, maybe, maybe even double up on the second position. Potentially, potentially that. Um, but let's let's look at GJ. So let's zoom out right here. So again, same thing that I've been looking at previously. We're just looking for where's the resistance, where's the support. And I'm zooming out quite a bit on this one, going back all the way to 2013. But you can see we have some resistance here. So we have some support here. Then let's zoom in a little bit more. This acted as support. This is minor to me, though. This is a little bit more major. We have some resistance here where it came up. And then it, obviously, this is the most recent area. It hit this level. Look at all this. It just started bouncing in between these two zones. And now we're back in this zone up here. So I am looking for GJ to potentially reject. Remember, GJ has not moved above this area in in like six years right or five and a half years so this would be a significant uh move to the upside if gj was to break this like 157 157 mark so let's go down to the four hour four hour time frame is super bullish right it just hiked all to the upside as soon as it hit the the key level just showing again how strong these areas are and look at so we just went over this on UCAD, right? We would want to see some sort of consolidation and then push the upside. GJ has is showing that exact thing that we're looking for. GJ moved down into the support level. It started to have all this weak price action. This was the first little break right here. So this was the first buying opportunity on the retest after the break. Then this was way more major. And then again, always trying to enter on a higher low. I'm not going to get too into structure here, but this tested a demand zone, it had a bullish engulfing, that's a buy, and then it shot all the way up back into this area. So we're looking for the same thing now um, to the upside. The trend is very bullish. The trend has you know, been making these highs, these higher lows, these highs, um, but now we just had our first little breakdown of structure. So price broke support, we're, we're retesting now. So this could be the first potential area. In my opinion, it's still very risky to enter right now but this could be the first lower high that forms if we just get one bearish candle that just dumps to the downside right here so if we literally just get one candle that starts to cover these previous bullish candles that would be a nice entry signal right there or we can wait for the actual break retest break retest there will be multiple entry uh potential entry areas on this one that's how it normally is if there isn't, then you just miss the trade and it is what it is. So let's see, where does UK Parliament is going to shut down the country again with the surge in Omicron case? Yeah, I mean, if they shut that shit down, then, you know, things ain't looking too hot for GBP. That's for damn sure. So look out for GJ. This could potentially be a massive move. This is a 60 pip, 70 pip, or 700 pip zone, I'm sorry. So this is a huge area to look for reversal right now. This is where you want to be trading at. You want to be trading at these key levels. If price hikes above this level, right, you'd be a little patient, look in the weekly, look in the four hour, wait for the retest, go long. But I don't believe it's gonna, that's going to happen. This will most likely reject uh, this zone and then move to the downside. And there's just so much room to play with here. So that's my last Forex pair, NU, GU. 
UCAD, GJ, these are all just kind of getting ready. I'm just forecasting. And then NU, like we went over, looking to actually answer on NU um, and, you know, see what happens on that one, get into position. So let's go to BTC next. Let's hop up to the, the weekly. So I've been doing some research and pretty much we shouldn't be looking at BTC to go long, right? Everyone's like, oh, BTC's, it's long-term bullish, right? Uh, but everyone's like, oh, just keep buying. Like right now it's buy, buy, buy. But we should be waiting for a 10% move to the upside before we execute really any buys, long-term, short-term, whatever. And we should be looking at a weekly candle to close at least 10%, ideally more, right? Every time BTC has had this little surge to the upside, it's had like a weekly 10% close. Here you can see it's had a weekly 10% close. Even if we start to go back down here, some of these lower candles, um, when it was more early on, you had like an 8%, which isn't, isn't great right there. But even right here, we had like a 30% close, right? So whenever BTC gets super bullish, we're seeing at least a 10% close on some sort of candle. Like we had this one, 17% close right there. So don't be just buying BTC just to buy, right? We need this to get back to the upside to some extent. Once it has a 10% close on the weekly time frame, then it's there's no reason not to buy because it is overall bullish. There's no reason not to just buy this. So I'm saying that as we're dumping, right? As we're shoot, like dumping to the downside, wait for that 10% close to the upside, then buy. We're right at a level right now where we've got resistance, obviously resistance, it acted as support. This is right around 40, 40,000, right? So this is a great level to be making moves at. Um, so we'll see. Once price comes down and finds some support, we'll look for a bullish candle, right? Um, it could break here. And then we're looking more in this area, which is just anyone can point this out. You don't gotta, it's not rocket science, right? It just acted as support here um, previously. So this is definitely another key area to look in right at about 32. That's where this thing could fall. If we don't find support here, it's going to fall here. I personally don't believe it'll go any lower than 30. And if, if I can get in at 30, that's, that's going to be a fun time. I'm, I'm buying hella BTC if it comes down to, uh, to 30, but wait, wait till the 10% move to the upside. I'm not going to go to the four hour because I'm not trying to short BTC, well, we'll go there, but I'm personally not trying to short BTC. If you are, this would be the move, waiting for it to come back up into this area, retracing all the way back up here, and then looking for rejection. That would be the, the best move. There's no really resistance here. Like, yeah, you do have this wick. I don't love trading off of that, though. Um, so I would like to see some sort of push up and then push down. So yeah, stay woke on that 10% thing. I heard that from uh, some pretty pretty reliable sources. Uh, I'll say I'll say that much. But you know, just play it safe. You don't want to enter too early. Once that hits a ten percent move back to the upside, it's showing that the market is really ready to push. Showing that buyers are really committing um, to that area. So yeah, stay woke. So that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna get into Stellar for today. I'm gonna I left that pair out for the week. I'm not interested in stellar for the week so that's pretty much everything that i'm going to go over if you guys have any final questions feel free um to post up in the chat i'm going to go ahead and stop sharing here and then we're just gonna or actually you know what? i'm going to go over one more thing for those that are in the funded trader obviously you guys see that we got the competition going this week so i'm going to go ahead share my screen one more time. If you guys didn't enter the competition next month, it will be open uh, for registry at the last week of the month. But basically what it is, is everyone has registered. They've gotten accounts through the dashboard and um, everyone is now in here. You see there's 3000 participants. We'll go over, click on the rules right here. So we've got a ton of prizes. So the top 20 people are pretty much going to get a prize. First place is going to get 200 K challenge. Uh, second place, 100K, third place, 50K. And then we've got all coupons available. It's all the same rules as the regular standard challenge for the funded trader. Um, and you can see here, like you can go ahead 
and look at who is in what place currently. Um, you could also see their closed trades. So what trades they've made money on. You've got the whole dashboard here where you can see each of their accounts and you can see some statistics um, on their accounts. So if you wanna go ahead and look at any of the accounts, see how they're doing, you can just go ahead and click on the name um, and then you can see like what trades they're in. This person's currently floating in some profit right now, some big profit. Um, so th these people are already up 12%. So tonight is the kickoff with Forex opening and indices and everything. We're gonna get a lot of movement in this. I do imagine a ton of people are gonna be uh, getting disqualified soon. Like they're gonna fail their accounts, but we'll see how it goes. We got 21 days left um, for people to make, you know, the most they can make on this account without failing. And you can join the contest next month. Make sure that you guys are in the Funded Trader Telegram, the Discord. I post it in the in the Forex League uh, account as well, the Forex League Telegram, Forex League Discord. You'll be able to register. You'll see here, you'll see an upcoming and you'll see February and you'll just click register and put in your email um, and everything besides that, you know, you're pretty much good to go. So that's pretty much it for the session. You know, thank you guys for hopping on. We'll post the recording of this um, after it's done being uploaded. We've got a bunch of stuff coming out with Forex League 2. I'm going to write in the chat. We're going to do an, a community update. Like I'm going to do a video and update all you guys. Um, but yeah, welcome all the new members. We've got a bunch of new people that are in the Discord here. I'm going to post the link to this competitions thing here. Uh, let's see, if you're a new lifetime member, how do you go about setting up the copy trader and the 50K challenge? So all the instructions are just inside of the course, right? So if you just go in the course at the top, just follow it step by step. It literally walks you through exactly what to do. And then there's a link there where you can schedule a call with me to help you set it up. Um, so if you're a bit lost, you know, just open the course and then you should be pretty much good to go. That'll guide you to where you need to go. Um, and that being said, yeah, everyone that purchases a lifetime membership, they actually get free challenges with the funded trader. So if you are a Forex League lifetime member, you can get funded uh, completely for free. And uh, yeah, we'll go over that in the community update when we do that. Thanks for the analysis. Yeah, no problem. Hopefully, you know, you guys use this analysis this week and, uh, you know, can make some profit off it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, everyone that's in, in the signals, you know, we're, we're going to be have, having trades come out. Pretty much everything's back, you know, with the holidays over with, everything like that. Should be all, markets should be pretty much back to normal now. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part. So we should be, you know, resuming normal activities. Guys, we're here, you know, every weekend every Sunday preparing, you know, we're here in chats, we're active. So you guys need anything, reach out to us and uh, yeah. Tune into the content guys, you know, learn a little bit, keep practicing. Yeah. We're yeah, all getting better as a community, back. you know? Yeah. We'll be back next week for another session. Sure. There you go. Peace out everybody. Take, take care guys. Peace.